something that might be hard to grasp from the far-off year of 2024 is just how much experimentation was happening with video games in the early 1980s. Boundary pushing still exists, of course, but the big companies are really hesitant to try anything outside of what they already know will work. I've shown a lot of odd experiments so far with the Famicom Disk System, but Nozzler Land might be the oddest to modern eyes. The closest direct comparison that I could make has been gone for 25 years. Nozzler Land is a video game magazine, not a magazine about video games. It's a magazine-style release of video games. The concept wasn't that uncommon back in the 1980s. There were various computer publications that had floppy disks or tapes, and they'd have regular releases like this with small programs on them. Nozzler Land is Sunsoft moving that concept to the Famicom Disk System and creating a disk with eight little games on it. The cover even tells you that this is the first issue, thus promising more. However, there'd only be three more issues, and they weren't exactly regularly paced. I'll get to those in time. There are no articles in this magazine, even in the manual. It is solely the eight mini-games. And the mini-games are... <sighs> Well, they're what you'd expect as a minigame collection put out in early 1987 by Sunsoft. They're still a few years away from really stepping up their games, and the games here are the blandest, most obvious, most boring games that you could imagine. The high point is Kaiten Meiro Doorman. In it, your goal is to find your way to the top of a five-story maze, and the passages in the maze are blocked by gates, these gates will rotate when you bump into them, and because they're laid out like a T, they can only rotate 90 degrees back and forth, while the paths that you can take change quite a bit. You can't rotate that door into a wall, so you're going to spend a lot of time flipping those doors and then trying to circle around so that you can flip it back in a way that will let you pass. Walking into a number will take you to that floor, and sometimes going up a floor will lead you to a dead end so you'll have to backtrack and find a different route up. There are no monsters, there's no time limit, there's no way to get a game over. And as I said, this is the best of the games. If you want to exit any of the games in Nuzzler Land, then you have to press reset on your console. A soft reboot will take you back to the main menu. Next up is Nuzzler Uranai, or Nuzzler Fortune Telling. Fortunately, this isn't just giving you a random fortune, Instead, you're playing Mastermind with the Signs of the Zodiac. Mastermind is a logic puzzle where the player's goal is to figure out the pattern by making their own pattern and being told how many they've got exactly right, the full stars here, and how many are just in the wrong position, the empty stars. It's one of those things that's trivial to do, so everyone used to put it in their games. When you figure out the combination, when you solve it, you get a fortune based on how long it took you to solve the puzzle, and how many guesses you had to make. So I guess this is implying that you can change your fate by playing Mastermind well. The next minigame is Super Jigsaw. There is one picture, and it keeps scrambling itself in a 11 by 14 pattern until you hit the start button. Then you can swap the position of any two pieces by hitting the A button. Whatever's on the clear arrow will swap with the solid arrow, and you press B to change which arrow you're controlling. Since everything is solid squares, and a lot of it doesn't have a whole lot of context, this seems like a really bad puzzle to solve. And your reward is a really awful picture. The guy with the question mark on his forehead is one of the characters associated with Nazolur Land, but that doesn't make it an interesting design. The fourth game is what might be the most significant one in the package, Momoko Hime o Sukue, or Save Princess Momoko. It's a basic little adventure game where you're given options and then pick from them. Do you go left or do you go right? Do you go up the stairs or do you go down? You're in a dungeon, though you really can't navigate it, and as you walk around you'll find items that might get you past obstacles that you encounter. If you wander into the wrong place, it's an instant game over. There's no saving or loading here, and it's not like you can really plan ahead. The reason that this one's significant is that it's actually a, well, I can't really call it a port, but let's call it a version of an existing game. 
It was a choose-your-own-adventure style game book kind of thing, except it was published in Puzzler magazine. That was a magazine dedicated to this kind of game and logic problems. So while this isn't especially fun, it does give us a window into what was happening elsewhere with Japanese games at the time. The next game you could play is Nihon Ishu Ultra Quiz, or the Ultra Quiz Around Japan. The idea here is that you have a certain number of points to start with, 50,000, and then you spend those to travel to new locations in Japan where you'll be asked a trivia question. Get it right and you get some points, get it wrong and you lose some. There are random events that can occur as you go around, but what you're really looking for are seven magic balls that you would bring back to Tokyo where you would get your wish granted. One thing I appreciate about this one is that there's no time limit on the questions, so I actually managed to read some and get them right. In most of these quiz games, I'm still working my way through the question when time runs out. I'm not sure how many questions there are in the quiz game, but I suspect it is not a huge quantity. Not when there's this many other games on the disc. The next game, and I am really using that term loosely here, is Famicom Takise Kensa, or Famicom Aptitude Test. Here, you wait for the timer to go off, and then mash the A button as hard as you can. Whoever mashes harder, wins. You can play this one against the computer, or two players, but either way, it's not a lot of fun. If you hadn't had enough of jigsaws yet, the next game is Oshidashi Puzzle. This one has three different stages, and all three stages have a different image. The key difference here is that you're controlling a vehicle, that can shove entire rows and columns of puzzle pieces. It's a cute variation on the jigsaw puzzle concept, if only it had a better picture. The final game on the disc is 3D Maze. All you get here is a first-person maze that is 32 squares by 32 squares, or 1,024 locations. The maze always starts in the same spot, and there's a goal, and they give you a page of what is essentially graph paper in the manual to plot your course, but there's no landmarks here, and nothing really to do in the maze other than wander. I tried using the good old hand-on-the-wall technique, and I kept walking in loops, so I suspect that they've designed the maze specifically for that. Or maybe the maze is just too simple and everything looks exactly the same. However, there is a map of 3D maze in Nozzler Land. You just have to beat the quiz game to see it. Hopefully you've got something handy to copy the map down when that happens. If you do manage to solve 3D Maze, then you're given an address to send a postcard to where you'd be entered into a drawing for a prize. That's everything in this first issue of Nozzler Land. Sunsoft is going to continue their association with Puzzler Magazine over the course of these, so we'll see more adaptations of things from the magazine as well as their mascots. Shockingly, Nozzler Land was not well received in Japan. It sold about 100,000 copies. From what I could find of people's memories of this one, it seems like a lot of people bought it on clearance, and then immediately popped it into the disc rewriter kiosk. And yeah, this is a disc of stinkers. I don't think there's anything on here that really rises above half-baked idea. Like, I could see the shoving puzzle game working, but it needs a little bit more going on and maybe better visual design for the image. The rotating door maze would be better if there were enemies chasing you and power-ups. But there's no saving the button masher. I know that if I bought this first issue of Nozzler Land, I definitely would not be picking up the second.